We learned in the videos on torque that torque it equals let me let me actually draw a picture so you remember what we're talking about with torque. So let's say so that's the arm. Let's say right here is kind of what its pivot is. That's its pivot. And let's say that I'm I'm putting a a force. Let's say I'm putting a force a force right there and it's perpendicular to this arm and let's say the length of this arm is r and that this force is well it's let's say that uh let's say that this force is f so we know that the for the torque is this force times the distance right torque is force times the distance and then we also know that what is force? Well, that is equal to mass times acceleration times distance. So torque is equal to mass times acceleration times distance. And then so so what is and then what is acceleration? Well, that's equal to mass times change in velocity over change in time times distance. Right? So that we learned all that from our torque chapter, and you might want to review it just to get an intuition of, of what torque is good for. But in general, if something isn't spinning, you apply torque, and you'll get it spinning. Or if something is spinning already, if you apply torque in the direction that it's spinning, it'll spin faster. Or if you go in the opposite direction, it'll spin slower. And, and what I'm showing you here is that what happens if you apply no torque? Well, if you apply no torque, then we know that this quantity is 0. Or another. Another way to think about it, actually, why did I write d? This is, well, it couldn't be d, but I shouldn't have called this r. This should be d. So if this is 0, if, if we're applying no torque, right, what do we know is we know that the change in velocity over change in time times this distance won't change, that this, this quantity is 0. So we know that the velocity times the distance is going to be a constant, is going to be a constant. And that comes from what I just you know talked about. It, I sometimes almost feel like it. It is. It falls out of Newton's laws, but it applies to spinning. An object that's not spinning will tend to not stay spinning, and an object that is spinning will tend to stay spinning. So in this case, if this object, if this point right here, so we're in a case where there's no torque, so this force is zero. There's no force applying here, and whatever this object's velocity was, right, is tangential velocity. It's going to stay that velocity. Right? It's just going to keep spinning at that velocity. If I apply more torque in lane, it'll go even faster. If I apply less torque, it'll it, it it'll slow down a little bit. But we know that this velocity times the distance is constant. And actually, well, I don't know why I took this m out. We know that the mass times the velocity times the distance is constant. Right? So what does that tell us? Well, we learned in the in the um, in the uh, ang angular velocity video. My mind's a little slow today. That what angular velocity is equal to velocity divided by divided by the radius and in this case the radius is this distance so we could also write it as velocity over distance and when i talk about radius it's just the radius of the circle that you're kind of going spinning around in right if that was this could be the circle up here so this d that's the same thing as the radius i'm just switching letters to confuse you but let's see if we can if we can if we can write something if we can change this expression to include angular velocity. And you'll see where I'm going in a second. So let's solve for v. So let's multiply both sides of this times d. So you get dw is equal to v. Right? I just took this d, put it on this side. So let's write that here. M times dw. Right? I just replaced the v times d is equal to a constant, assuming that we have no net torque on the system. And so what does that get us? Well, that gets us m times the angular velocity times d squared is equal to a constant. So what does this tell us? This tells us the mass of an object spinning. So let me, let me re rewrite this, because I think So what we know is that the mass of, of an object spinning times how fast it is spinning times the, the distance to the, the center of its rotation. And actually, I'm going to change that d to an r. I don't know why I even used d to the begin with. Times that squared. That's going to be equal to a constant. 
assuming no net force, no net torque. And another way of, of looking at that, if we if we just wanted to go to angular velocity from the get go, we could have said torque is equal to mass times change in velocity times change in time times the radius to the, the center of where you're rotating around. And change in velocity is just the same thing as mass times change in angular velocity times r, or change in time. Oh, and then there's another r. That's this r. right? Because velocity is angular velocity times r, and we're assuming r doesn't change. So any change in velocity is just going to be a change in the angular velocity. And then we would get the same thing that we just got here. If we have no net torque, we're going to have no change in angular velocity, so angular velocity will be a constant. So you'll get mass times angular velocity times, and then you have this r and this r times r squared is going to be equal to constant. What am I? Go where am I going with all of this? Well, let's let's think about something. Let's say that I have some object traveling in a circle. I do everything for a reason, and you'll see my reason right now. Let's say let's say that this is some some kind of well let me, let me I think it'll make sense in a second. So this is oh well, I don't know, let's say this is some type of retractable pole and I'm an ice skater. And and I'm not using the ice skater's body right now for for uh because it, it'll become complicated. Let's say this is some type of robot arm. Right, and that's its joint right there, and it's holding a mass out here. It's holding a mass, and this is neat because after this this concept, you will understand what goes on in figure skating, and in the Olympics. Oh no, the Winter Olympics are over, aren't they? Well, anyway, um, so let's say that this object is is spinning around at some rate, right? Some rate. Uh, let's say it's spinning around at oh I don't know, ten ten radians a second, ten radians. A second, that's its angular velocity, and let's say right now, its its rotational distance is I don't know. Let's say it's it's ten feet. So let's say it's, this is you know this is spinning on a on a uh, this is an object that's spinning on a on an ice skating rink. I guess is is a good way because you you don't want friction and all of that. So what's its its current angular momentum? So that's what this this term right here is angular momentum so what's its an current angular momentum well it's its mass times 10 times right 10 is its actually let me let's make this raise a different number let's let's call it let's call it 8 feet just so you know what i'm doing so its angular velocity is 10 and then its radius is 8 so times 64 so it equals 640 times the mass this is its angular momentum, right? Now, what happens if this arm, for whatever reason, shortens, and you know, it, maybe it, it does something like this? The arm kind of bends, and then the mass comes here. It comes in closer to the center. Let me write that in a different color. The mass comes close to the center. So now the radius is four, but I've had no net torque on the system. All I've done is change is change how far it is from the center of rotation. How much faster is it going to spin now? Well, let's think about it. Its angular momentum won't change. This is a constant, which is its angular momentum. That won't change. So we now know that the mass times times the angular the new angular momentum, we'll write that the angular momentum one, times the new distance squared, times sixteen, is also going to be equal to six hundred forty M, right? The angular momentum doesn't change. Let's cross out m from both sides, and then divide both sides by 16. We now have that w1 is equal to 16 goes into 640. So what happened? Originally, I was going around at 10 radians per second. When I halved the radius, when I got uh, when I got half as close to the center of my rotation, I'm actually spinning around four times as much, and that's because this term is a quadratic term. And and this makes uh, you you probably have observed this behavior before when you have when you see the ice skater uh, skating around and and they're spinning with their arms wide open and then they pull their arms in and they go a lot 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 faster and that's because the their angular velocity or the rate at which they're spinning is proportional to the square of 
of the radius of, around their their axis of rotation. Anyway, I hope I didn't confuse you, and I'll do some more problems with this in the future. But I've just